Hi, this is Max Kaiser. This is the Kaiser Report. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Stacy? <laughs> Max, we're in North Carolina, and you know what? One of the themes of our show over the past few months has been the implosion of the Democratic Party and how they might recapture sort of power. Last week, of course, there was the Moral Mondays. The annual event happened here in North Carolina. 80,000 people turned up, and they're trying to basically reclaim power. Let's, however, look at the Beltway, the Beltway swords, the, the people in Washington, D.C., and New York City, and maybe Los Angeles and San Francisco, the sort of elite, and how they're not doing such a good job at reclaiming power. The first headline reads, in case you thought Trump was imploding, dot, dot, dot. For those of you who may be cocooned in the liberal blogosphere, I'm afraid I must administer a cold slap in the face. Here is the graph of Gallup's economic confidence survey from its inception nearly 10 years ago. Notice that spike to new highs right at the end? There is the new highs right at the end. That started November, right after the election. Yes, well, I mean, it gives people hope that any doofus in America can become president of the United States. I think that's a very uplifting message. And it's a sound message. As I said before the election, the genius of the American system is that anyone with a competent intelligence can run for president and just obey the Constitution. And what we found in Trump's early going is that he ran right up against the Constitution. Uh, that's what I predicted, you know, would be the case. But it's good to have somebody try to test the limits of the Constitution. I think with Obama, he was so fearful of getting offending anybody that he was very timid and didn't really find out what his what his powers really how they extended except in like foreign policy where he could just drone people and kill people without and and summarily execute people with no due process and that even extended to americans and things like that he could do yes because he's a psychopath but as far as domestically he he was unable to test uh, the metal of the constitution this is what trump is doing and Will he be able to operate with these types of restrictions? Probably not. He'll probably have a nervous breakdown, you know, in the next, in, within the first year, I would, I would guess. Well, but, I mean, the thing is, I've said this before on our show, and I said that it used to be, when I was growing up, that the Republicans would just focus on social issues and forget about the economy. And then Bill Clinton came along and he said, it's the economy, stupid. And he got everybody to vote for Bill Clinton and the Democrats. Well. Here is the case that the Democrats of today focus only on social issues and they don't care about the economy, they don't care about the economic suffering. I was, when we were at that Moral Mondays event last week here in North Carolina and Raleigh, what we learned was an interesting story from this reverend called Kojo. And he said um, back in 1961, the big three auto manufacturers of America over in Detroit, General Motors, Ford, and Chevrolet, we're gonna build factories here in North Carolina, down in Wilmington, right on the coast. And what happened? Well, the people here, it was a white town, they said they didn't want black people to get jobs there, working for a union and getting good jobs. So they boycotted, there were big headline news down there in Wilmington. The, the big three auto manufacturers decided not to come because there was so much resistance. There was a huge vocal resistance based on social issues, based on you know, their own social problems. So what happens today? Cut to today, it's uh, Wilmington is a town of 100,000 people. It's one of the highest concentration of opioid addicted in the United States. And it uh, has been because they didn't look at the economy and the economics. Right, well, racism's always been a huge factor in American uh, politics and American history. Wilmington could have been a big city. It chose, because of its racist tendencies, not to hire higher wage auto working jobs because they feared that the black community would be enfranchised in some way mm -hmm. and the racist people here didn't want that. This is why healthcare in America was so difficult to get passed to begin with for the past 50, 60, 100 years. It's because the white people don't want the black people to live that as long as they do. There's still a genocidal tendency in the white community. And this politics of the Democrats today, I would characterize it as greed versus narcissism. The Republicans appeal to people's greed, and the idea is if everybody's greedy, then everyone benefits. It's the idea of mutual um, satisfaction, 
generated by mutual self-interest. Whereas on the other side of the aisle, we have now something called narcissism, where if I have, if I'm a transgender person that likes to sunbathe on a certain day within uh, and wear a certain outfit, I should have my own bathroom. That's narcissism taken to a degree that's completely ridiculous and is unsustainable and economic falderall. Just like the idea of self-pursuit on the other side taken to the degree of, well, if I hire um, a weapons manufacturer to go kill a million Iraqis in my self-interest, well, isn't that good? No, that's also quite bad. But you have these two extremes, extreme narcissism versus extreme capitalism or extreme self-interest. But neither one of them works. However, the extreme capitalism does play well in the general population because people like having lots of money, even to the extent of hoarding money, like Warren Buffett hoards cash the way some old granny would hoard old newspapers. He'll never spend this money. He's not adding anything to the economy. He just have a garage full of dollars that is just stacked up like garbage. It doesn't, doesn't circulate, doesn't do anything. He's a hoarder. Uh, uh, and he's, he needs to see a doctor about this. <laughs> well, let's go back to this whole economy, Super, because you mentioned the, uh, narcissism, and of course, echo chambers are a symptom of narcissism. They want to hear themselves. You want to hear yourself over and over, and you want confirmation of your thoughts and your opinions over and over, and that's all you want to hear. So if you go onto Twitter, and I've kind of abandoned it lately because it's just a horrible echo chamber and just a disgraceful place at this point. But if you go there, you would think that Trump is imploding. But again, going back to these charts, the actual data that Gallup has been collecting for a decade now in terms of economic confidence, this is a close-up of the last three months. And you see a 10% spike right after the elections and then another 10% spike right after from january 20th so whatever your opinion and whatever your uh you know funny impersonations and jokes and stuff about donald trump might you know you think you, all your friends laugh the opinion on the street is people feel and i'm not saying that trump is going to deliver but right now they're feeling better about their economic prospects yeah, um, you know, as, as I think as Glenn Greenwald has pointed out uh, numerous times that these folks that have given Trump their unbridled attention, when he starts to fail in his ability to deliver, they will be the first at the barricades. I mean, he's really cooked up a toxic cocktail mm. of gun-wielding, disenfranchised Americans who are not going to have much more patience after 12 months or 18 months if there's no delivery on these promises. Right now, he's delivering for Wall Street. This is my biggest critique so far, is that he appears to have installed a kleptocracy in America the way that America installed Boris Yeltsin in, after the Soviet Union collapsed. They installed an American-run kleptocracy. This appears to be what Trump has done by bringing in his cabinet of Goldman Sachs guys, and America will go the way of R R Russia, Soviet Union did in the f early days pre-Putin when it went into a free fall collapse. That, that could be, as, as our friend who wrote the brilliant the collapse gap, Dmitry Orlov wrote, it's just two tale of two countries, one's collapsing at a rate faster than the other. America's collapse came 25, 30 years after Russia's or Soviet Union collapse. But it looks like if Trump goes down this path he's going on, we're going to see that collapse. Well, again, the theme of the show is like why the Democrats are, continue to lose, why they have not gained power, why I think they will continue to lose. And they feel that mocking and jeering and ridiculing and laughing and hating the people that voted for Trump is somehow some sort of answer. I remember during the election, well, everybody knows it was make America great again. That was his uh, slogan. That was Trump's slogan. Everybody had the red hat, make America great again. If you wear a make America great or make Bitcoin great again, you get beaten up today. But he was hashtag MAGA. Well, what did Hillary Clinton say in response? She said, America's already great. Ha, <laughs> ha. Like you imbeciles who believe that. So here's another tweet. Utterly baffling that America is already great was not a win winning campaign message. And this was in reference to a headline. 43% of America's children are in families barely able to afford most basic needs. So this is a chart, two graphs. That's America in 2000. This is America 2014. All those red spots are severe poverty. 
look at the increase. It's spreading across the whole U.S. Um, you know, back under the days of Clinton and Bush too, you know, you would have the Beltway just laugh at the South. It was just the deep South that was in severe poverty. Now the severe poverty has increased up, up through the Rust Belt. These all voted. These went for Trump. Uh, these are people looking for an economic answer. They're not looking for social issues. They're not looking for, you know, all these sort of social matters and sort of you're, you're equal, you're great, you're, you, we all feel good, we all love each other, forget about the economy, just sign my trade deal and everything will be great as long as we have, you know, everybody has an individual bathroom. Yeah, the, the, what's kept the relative stability in the U.S. is globalization. Uh, all, uh, at all, it has shipped jobs overseas and people's purchasing power has collapsed, but the prices of stuff have gone down even faster. Mm -hmm. So you're making half of what you made five years ago, but you're buying that flat screen TV and you're buying clothes and you're buying stuff that 75% cheaper, 90% cheaper in some cases. So you're not really feeling this loss of, of lifestyle necessarily, even though you don't have a job because the price of stuff has gone down radically. Now, if we start to see the price of inflation go up, and if it starts to go up even higher than any wage increases going forward, then that all reverses. People are really going to feel it. And these people that are one step into the homeless gutter of, you know, poverty, of, you know, yeah. this, they're, 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 they're going to be uh, mobilized, I believe. Well, and let's finally turn to this, because fake news, how the Democrats might possibly uh, recover any sort of power, and it's the economy stupid, all come together in this segment, a series that Liberty Blitzkrieg is doing. And it's based on this guy, Ken Wilber, who is like a philosopher and thinker from Duke University. And he goes, how a breakdown in liberal ideology created Trump. This really ties in all of these things in one simple, sent in one simple paragraph. And I want to read it to you. The cultural belief was that everybody is created equal, that all people have a perfect and equal right to full personal empowerment, that nobody is intrinsically superior to others. Beliefs that flourished with this whole sort of uh, beltway sort of uh, elite I was talking about. Yet the overwhelming reality was increasingly one of a stark and rapidly growing inequality in terms of income and overall worth, property ownership, employment opportunity, healthcare access, life satisfaction issues. The culture was constantly telling